Hi everyone, my name is Ashley and this is my channel, So Ashley B. And this series is going to be a part of my sewing journey blog. So pretty much what that means is that this is going to be talking about the series of videos. We'll be talking about my current projects I'm working on, projects I just got done with, and what kind of happens in the life of a costume designer. And a lot of my projects require me to either do things conventional or non-conventional, but I like to try a little bit of everything. So just to give you guys an update of where I am right now in my sewing journey, I just got done with a theater show called The Mixtape Show. It's actually out in San Francisco. I do know I no longer live in San Francisco. I live in Sacramento now. Much easier. And this was definitely a fun show. This had a little bit about the show. It's takes place in Piano Fight, which is actually one of my favorite hangouts back in the city. And it's listed as the costume designer. Me personally, if I don't make anything, I don't really consider it me designing. I consider it more consulting. If you guys want me to go into more detail about the difference of that, make a comment below. But for now, just let's just leave it at that. The thing I loved about this show was that people were fun. I got to kind of invoke some ideas I've been wanting to try out. So one of the actors who's playing a drag king is doing a glitter beard. Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh, I love glitter beards. Anything glitter sounds amazing, honestly. So I got to work with them. It's really great. Check out the show. It's fun. And also, if you are under 21, it does take place in a bar, but they serve food so you can go to. And also, that place just has so many great events going on highly encourage you guys to go see it and maybe if you're lucky I'll be there too but again I don't live there so I'm only gonna be there for a few of the performances but working on low budget productions like that are it's very fun it's challenging and it just kind of makes you have to come up with nice creative ways of how to save money but still produce good quality work and everyone there wanted to produce good quality work and that's what I love so much about it so that's something that I just got done fin I just got finished doing. Sorry. Love it. It's great. Bam. So right now my I have three projects that I plan on working on and they kind of range with their difficulty level. So the first one is a yellow jacket. So just the other day I was at Goodwill and I found this so cute so cute michael cords yellow light linen like button up jacket and the arms were cinched up and it was the perfect summer jacket i love bright colors i love colors i love boldness i mean if you can't kind of tell um <laughs> so i love this jacket and i almost bought it but then i realized hey I have something at home that's very similar, granted it's from the 90s, and it definitely doesn't have these design elements, it's not made out of linen, but it's made out of cotton, and I thought, why am I going to spend money on something that is similar that I already have, and that I can help transform it into this design that I like? So that one I'm going to be doing a little bit more of upcycling. A project that I'm currently in the midst of doing is my Inuyasha cosplay. So I started the Inuyasha because it is a cosplay I've been wanting to do for many, many years. And I first got into cosplay, like costume, dress up. No, that's not accurate. I was dressing up before I even went to conventions, but conventions definitely helped like encourage me to continue doing cosplays and just the environment was amazing because it's just a bunch of people who are passionate about something coming together and representing what they're passionate about. And I love that and I love being around that, but because of school, because of career-wise, I haven't been in the convention circuit for a while and I wanna get back into it. So I chose to do Inyasha as my first cosplay to get back into it. And I actually have the muslin done. I followed a pattern and Per my usual, I always try to make the muslin out of, like, following the pattern, but I always just end up doing something different. I never follow all the way through, especially when I make the final product, it's always different. And because of my body type, I don't have a true size 
14 to true size 12, which is typically the two sizes I have in regards to patterns. It just depends where on my body. So I always end up having to modify the patterns, which I am fine with because I know how to do pattern drafting um, and to just work with patterns, work with different types of fabric. So it's not difficult for me. It's just something I know going in, which is why I love making muslins. And also, if you don't really understand that term, muslins is actually technically referring to a type of fabric which most designers use to make their first rough draft of their costume or their creation in. Now, I am using it more in a term of like rough draft. I use any type of material that's similar to what I plan on using for the final project because I want to be as accurate to the final project as possible and also if it turns out right, I would love to be able to wear it, which oftentimes has happened where I make something and it turns out okay. So I'm like, great, I'm going to keep it, go with it. Awesome. So that's been going great. Some problems with the wig. I ordered a wig on Amazon. I ordered another wig because I thought it would be better. Turns out it wasn't. I returned it right back. So I may possibly have enough time. I will do a tutorial showing you guys how I'm going to do take this straight wig and kind of give it more of a curl texture because I do think that it would be very fun to make it where Inyasha has a little more curly hair like if not curly like nice little tight waves to it we're gonna pl play with it a lot and I'll show you guys if it turns out well what it looks like my deadline for that project is I would like to finish it personally in about two weeks because I already got the muslin done that's the hardest part my measurements I have them all taken everything's pretty much done just using the final fabric I already have the final red fabric picked out but I haven't found the perfect white fabric but I don't think it's very hard I just need to go to the store and only buy white fabric but I can't guarantee it's gonna happen because I love white fabric I love all fabric fabrics beautiful I need it all but that's one of the things I have to buy for that project. Everything else I have pretty much done, except for the, the only thing I have yet to decide on and give a full concrete vision on is the necklace. Now, if you know Inuyasha, he has his kind of purple pearled necklace that is supposed to be um, what kind of keeps him in line. Put it simply, whenever he starts acting up, it helps keep him in line. And I wasn't sure, since I'm doing a non-traditional type of cosplay, I'm not sure how non-traditional I want to go. I personally love as much jewelry as possible, so I was thinking about doing bracelets and earrings and not doing anything around the neck because of how dramatic I want it to be and the detail work I want to put in the actual costume in regards to stitching. That's one of those things I'm going to wait kind of towards the end to decide on, but I'll eventually get there. And then one of my biggest projects I have coming up is going to be my Renaissance Fair cosplay. Although at that point it's not really a cosplay, I think it's more of a costume. One of the big things about this Renaissance Fair that I'm really excited for is the fact that it'll be my first Renaissance Fair. I've done a lot of Comic-Con conventions and random events for me to just buy an excuse to dress up for. Because the best part for me of doing things is getting a chance to dress up and I love theme parties. It's so much fun. With this Renaissance Fair, there's a few things that I know for sure I want and a few things that I'm not quite sure of. So me and my friend have talked about it and we're both taking two different approaches to creating our costume for this fair. So she's going a little more non-traditional and she's going to be taking a prom dress and literally sewing fabric on top of it to help create her big finished look. Now me, I would love a good challenge, so I'm going to be going a little more traditional with my sewing and starting from the making everything from scratch. I say that, we'll see how far that goes. So for me and my process as a costume designer, first things first, is making sure you do your research. So what I already know that I want for this costume is I want it to be black, red, and I would love to have pearls on it. Typically whenever I do costumes or I do cosplay, I lean to more happy characters. I lean towards people that are the heroes, people that 
are just very strong and I've never really done a villain because I haven't had much desire to do villains because sometimes I may connect with parts of them but not completely and I feel like being able to create my own type of villain would be so much fun. And you know it's fun to be a little bad every now and then. So for me what I'm going to be doing is I have my handy dandy historical well, historic costume book. One of my favorite books I got from college and I actually use this a lot even when I'm making some of my regular cosplays because I feel like it's nice to have a basic understanding of what certain design elements symbolize during that time period. And so I always make reference to this. I do not claim to be a historian. I just claim to be someone that enjoys good research. Now, with that being said, I also do have a few patterns in my personal collection that I've collected over the years. I will probably never admit to how many patterns I currently have because why? <laughs> no one needs to know how many patterns I have. I don't want to know how many patterns I have. Let's just leave it at that, okay? I've been sewing for many, many years. I grew up sewing. I come from a family of sewists, but mostly quilters. I have no patience for quilting whatsoever. So I chose sewing. So I, the first pattern I'm gonna show you guys is probably a very common pattern that we're gonna be seeing out there. It's definitely true to the time period, but it feels a little bar made in for me. And I want to go a little more high class, I'm sophisticated, I have money, and I'm here to mess up someone's life. So, I don't know, I'm going to keep this one in mind. And there might be certain elements I may take from this pattern, but I'm not quite sure. And then I do have this historical undergarment that I am excited about. So I probably will be making maybe one or two things from this pattern not quite sure which one yet it all does depend on what my final design is but it's very good to know what type of patterns i have that i could be using now of course well of course being someone that loves patterns you tend to do something and uh, this is good evidence of it you tend to buy two of the same pattern. Now, in my defense, I happily discovered that these are in two different sizes. Well, size range. So this one is from 14 to 20, and this one is from 6 to 12. So yay, it's kind of intentional. I don't think it was. I think I was smaller, and I think I got bigger, but whatever, it's fine. So as a costume designer, this is perfect. This is right for my job. Great. But I do love this. I think this is a really good basic kind of pattern that I could be following. I don't think I'm going to be doing these sleeves. I love dramatic. I want big sleeves. But again, this is going to be a really great place for me to start with my design process. Since I haven't done Renaissance, since I haven't done a Renaissance fair ever, I think it's going to be a lot of fun because I think there's going to be a lot of freedom. Also, I am doing some online research as well too, so we'll see where that takes me. I already have a Pinterest board dedicated to it. If you would like to follow me on Pinterest, I will post a link somewhere on this beautiful screen. Me, I have two separate Instagram accounts. One that's dedicated just to my sewing, which is Sew Ashley B, the same as this page. And then there's my other one, Backstage with AB. That's more of my backstage life, behind the scenes, what's going on, what I'm doing, and more random type of pictures. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram, Facebook. I'll make sure to post a link on the screen and then also in the description below. In the description below I also post a link to the show I just got done working with and also one thing that I've always found so frustrating in regards to watching YouTube videos in regards to sewing is, is that a lot of sewers spend a lot of time talking. I am guilty as charged. I understand that. I accept it and I understand why it happens. So to help save you guys time I'm going to try my hardest to always post in the description box timestamps of what I'm talking about. That way if you decide you want to watch my video you can scroll down and then be like okay where is she going to start talking about what I want her to talk about. And we do the same thing for when I go into tutorials, when I go into my vlogs. It's going to be a little hard to do with my sewing journey vlog but we'll see how it goes. And 
Anywho, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will hopefully see you guys later. Bye!